been some confusion around the new installation process for the Salesforce data loaders. So in this video, I'll be installing the Salesforce data loader along with the Zulu JDK. This will be on a Windows machine, so the process may vary for Mac. Make sure to stick around to the end where we actually insert some records into our account object inside of Salesforce. If this video is helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Comment down below on some other Salesforce data loaders that you use so I can dry them out. What I want to do is upload into my accounts this list of really cool Salesforce YouTubers. So let's go ahead and install the data loader. I'm going to go into the setup. type in data loader. You will need to put a space in there. And then there's separate install instructions for Windows and for Mac. I'm going to be on the Windows version, so I'll go ahead and click on the download link. And I'll also click on the installation guide because there is another tool that we will need to download to make our data loader work correctly. We can see it here as the Zulu Open JDK and specifically version 11. So I'll click on this link to bring us to the Zulu downloader. Let's find the correct one. It looks like these are version 14, version 13, and there we go, version 11. So I'm looking for the MSI, which is basically an installer. We don't have to worry about unzipping anything or doing any other weird stuff. So I will just go ahead and click on that. Cool, so now that's done downloading and let's go through the installer. I'm gonna hit next, next, next so that it goes through everything and you may get a warning screen, so just go ahead and continue through that. And now we have our JDK version 11 installed. Cool, so the next step is actually installing our data loader. So I'm gonna go into my file explorer, right click and extract all. Perfect, everything is extracted into this new folder. Let's go into that and start to run our data loader installer. So it's this install.bat. BAT files can be a little sketchy. This is why we're getting this warning screen here. We're gonna go ahead and click more information and run anyways because we know this is coming from Salesforce. And now we are presented with a scary terminal screen. But I'm gonna walk you through this to make it really simple. The first thing it's asking is where do we want to install the data loader? For me, this default directory works perfect. If you want to change it, just type in the path there. It looks like I already have the data loader installed, so I'm just gonna type in yes to override it and new fields are gonna be installed there. Next, it's asking you if you want to create a start menu shortcut. I'm gonna say yes. And then finally, it asks if you want a desktop icon. I'm going to say yes, and then it closes automatically. Cool, so that is it. We technically have our data loader installed. Let's actually use it. I'm going to go into my start menu, type in data loader, and the one we installed was the data loader version 48. Depending on when you're watching this, you may have a different version, but if you created the desktop shortcut, you can also click on it there. All right, we're getting another warning screen here, just saying that we're running another BAT file that is unknown. So we're gonna click more information and run anyways. And we're getting another scary terminal that comes up here, which is fine. That's actually what it's supposed to look like. And we can see here, if you're familiar with the Salesforce data loader, we have it uh, loaded up here. One thing to note, if you do close the terminal in the background, it will close the actual data loader. They both run together, so you will need to have both of them open at the same time. Let's do our insert of records. I'm logging in here to my trailhead org. Do my verification. And it looks like we've logged in successfully. 
I'm going to hit next and browse for that CSV that we created. Hit next on that, make sure the records show up. And then let's add these in as the name. Make sure to subscribe for additional videos on the data loader. We are doing a quick insert now, but there are definitely more advanced features that this data loader has, which we will be going over in later videos. So subscribe so you don't miss out on those. Let's select the folder that we want to have our success and error files be saved to. Hit finish here. And now we can see our successes. Let's actually go into our org and check to see if they were created. There we have it. Our brand new super awesome YouTubers are inside of our accounts. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm really having a blast creating these videos. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe so that I know that you all like this content. It really means a lot to me. Leave a comment down below on different data loaders that you like to use. This definitely isn't the only one and I'd like to know some other ones to try out. As always, I'm Walters954 and remember, I believe in you.